Okay, so we are live. Hi, everyone. It's Wednesday, November the 4th, uh, 2020. It Today is International Stress Awareness Day. Holy moly, what a timely day, um, given everything that's going on in the world. And we're going to talk about some stress and stress relief and ways that our guest, Carrie Gangram, actually finds relief um, from her stress in her life and helps so many other women to relieve the stress in their life. So welcome, Carrie, to the Find Your 40 group here in Facebook. Thank you for having me, Jody. Oh, I'm Bye. so excited. <laughs> I'm so, so excited to have you here today. Um, I see there's people that are already joining in, so I can see the little eyeballs that people are watching us, so that's great. Awesome. I'd like to welcome everyone who has tuned in to watch us live today. And if you're not watching this live and you're watching it on replay, then that is also great, and thank you for doing that. For those of you that are live, what I'd like you to do, um, this is through StreamYard. StreamYard is uh, broadcasting this to Facebook. So StreamYard needs your permission to show your name um, if you would like to comment. So what I would love for all of you to do, Carrie and I want to know who's on this call so that we can talk to you directly. So that's always nice rather than just talking to anonymous people. So if you can please go to the comments section and but before you do that, um, give permission to StreamYard to show your name, your Facebook name. So if you can do that first, just give permission. There should be a little um, link that you can click on the right side of your screen. And then number two, go to the comments box, please, and tell us who you are and where you are uh, watching from today. So that would be really nice to know if we have people from across Canada or if it's all local people, um, that would be really uh, interesting to us. So without further ado, I want to just say uh, for all of you that are on watching right now, you're watching this in our Find Your 40 group on Facebook. And so I had this vision to start this Find Your 40 group um, back in you know the earlier part of 2020 um, when I started realizing that, oh, hi there, Jen. Thanks for, uh, thanks for letting us know that you're on the call. Um, so back in the early part of 2020, I started realizing that there was a trend among women in their 40s who wanted to, um, you know, really start focusing on them, start focusing on their health. Hello, Susie. Thanks for joining. Um, focusing on themselves, focusing on their health. You know, the age of being in your 40s is a really cool time because for most of us, we started having our kids when we were maybe in our late 20s or early 30s. So by the time you hit your 40s, you're in a place where you can start to focus more on what you personally need. And you, you, um, I like to say it's also a time where as women, we put up with way less bullshit in the language, but it's absolutely true. And so if we're in that time in our life where we can focus on ourselves, we don't want the negativity in our life, we want to just feel great, we want to look great. That's what this is all about. And so Carrie, you are part two of a three part series of what I'm calling women change makers. And so um, the three people that I've chosen to be part of this change maker series, um, Jody Becker was two weeks ago, Carrie, you are today. And then in two weeks, we have uh, Susie Martin that's gonna be joining us to talk about her journey and the change that she is forging in her life and influencing others. But Carrie, you're here today because I think your story is fascinating. You know that I'm a huge fan, we're close friends, we've been friends for many, many years um, since we were in a previous life, a previous business <laughs> together, um, which we won't get into here because that's a whole different conversation. Um, but you and I have 
um, stayed, obviously stayed close and stayed in touch throughout our journeys. And even though we're not in that other business venture together, we are, um, well, I see you almost every day on my screen. Because I got to work out with you now. At, I'm in the 615 Club, which I never in a million years thought that I would be. I didn't think I'd be in it either. <laughs> yeah, no. And when you first started sharing that you were doing 615 workouts, I was like, well, that sounds nice, but I will never be on that call. So anyways, without further ado, Carrie, I'd love you to introduce yourself and just tell everybody a little bit about um, about who you are and what it is that you do and what is Everybody Fitness with Carrie all about? Awesome. Thanks, Jody. So my name is Carrie Gangram and I have been through a long, many years of this journey trying to get um, to where I am now and I'm definitely a work in progress. I've never achieved my journey. I haven't finished where I wanna go. I'm just kind of part of that. Um, so what I've been doing is um, I started working out about 10 years ago, very slowly, one day at a time. And I started realizing that it made me feel good mentally, physically. Um, to full disclosure, I absolutely started with the intention of losing weight. That was 100% my full intention. That is not my intention anymore. That's been part of my journey, and we'll get into that in a bit. Yeah. But that was definitely my original motivator was to lose weight. As most of us women think that's going to be our happiness. If we lose weight, then we'll find okay. our happiness. Yeah. Um, I've learned in time that you know, running and exercising and meeting so many women has actually brought me far more happiness than losing weight could ever do. So I started doing that. I don't even actually remember how it all happened, but somehow I decided to register for a fitness instructor course and then I it got canceled over COVID. And then I was part of the very first virtual uh, fitness instru um, instructor training that CanFit Pro ever did. I did that and I worked out every day over Zoom with two to three friends um, while I was getting trained and we just worked out together and now I'm certified and now I have between nine and sometimes 30 people a day coming on every single day, logging on pretty much solely over Zoom. Um, everyone's doing it from the comfort of their own home. We're doing it from different time zones. We have people out west doing it. We have people, my old friends in Branson doing it, friends here, people like yourself, um, work from home women, stay at home moms. Um, I pride myself on um, every body fitness. I took a it actually didn't take me a long time to come up with that, with that name, but when I saw the name, it made sense because I feel very strongly about that if you looked at my classes through the screen, it is everybody. It is women who are extremely athletic. It is women who are beginners. It is women in smaller bodies, women in larger bodies, women in every size body shape. I have 18 year olds. I have, uh, I have 50 year olds. This morning I had my 70 year olds. I have everybody in there. It is everybody. And I really pride myself on that everybody can do this, what we're doing. And I think that's more and more every day, everybody is starting to do it. <laughs> yeah. You even have some husbands that join in, like mine. I have some husbands, and the husbands have a tough time keeping up with the women for sure. <laughs> Oh, I can honestly yeah. say that my husband has a hard time keeping up with you and this class yeah. and with what I'm doing when I'm in your class and yeah. which is which is great. So I'm glad that you're appealing to so many bodies, so many people. And I think your timing was was absolutely brilliant. But I know you and I know that you've been talking about following this dream and this passion of yours for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I think I want to say I heard you say it about three or three years ago, four years ago, that I first heard you say that you could see yourself one day teaching group fitness classes. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time going, absolutely, I could see you doing that. Because when I've when I think back over how I've known you and how I've seen you progress, um, I've seen this incredible transformation um, and I've watched you actually become like this absolute aficionado of, of fitness. But because, because you are, you are changing mindsets, you are changing people's um, confidence is what I'm seeing you do. And 
you know, so for those of you that aren't a part of Carrie's fitness world, um, you know, we're not here today to try to sell you, you know, okay, you have to join up for this. What we're trying to get across in this discussion today is that, you know, whatever it is that's holding you back, whatever fears you might have, whatever preconceived notion around your body and what it should look like or your motivation for doing it, um, I, I want everybody to reconsider, you know, what your why is and what your story is, because Carrie, I think your story is amazing. And what I would love for you to share with everyone is, you know, what was your aha moment? What was that moment where you where you went like, OK, I need to start moving my body. I need to start making a change. So I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. So it's interesting because. I am very grateful for this moment, but I would have made a lot of changes in this moment. Hmm. So I think my daughter, Taylor, she's 16 now. She was probably about six at the time. And I was in my bathroom and I was naked. We were, I don't know, I was getting ready or something. And she said in the most purest, most sweetest thing, she was like, mommy, your belly is so big and beautiful. Oh. And it was so sweet and it was so genuine. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I said, Thank you so much. But mommy's belly is not healthy. Your belly's healthy. Your belly's healthy. And she was so like, you're not healthy. And I was like, no, we need to start making some changes and eating better and things like that. And at that moment, I did. And everything changed for me in that moment. Right. However, what if I could go back in that moment, what I would have said to Taylor is, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that would have been it because what I told the six year old is a big belly is not healthy and your flat belly is healthy. And we know that we all have, we see those that we see tons of people there who have flat bellies who are not healthy. And we see people in, in larger bodies who are healthy. And I just didn't know that at the time. And that just took time. So right. I'm grateful for that moment, but I could, I wish I could have made changes. And since then we've had lots of conversations with my kids about that, but that moment, of how she looked at me with such, I thought, wow, why can't I look and talk to myself the way my six-year-old looks at us? And I think about it all the time. We need to talk to ourselves and look at ourselves how our children look at us. Because she didn't see, look at my mom with this gross belly. She was like, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So the very next day is when I started Couch to 5K and ran my very first minute my entire life. Wow. And then I just never stopped after that. It was small, small changes, but that was my moment. But I still wish I had handled it differently, but I'm very grateful for it. Amazing. It's amazing how those little things that happen, those little conversations can change your life. Yeah. Right. It's those, it's those little moments that we cherish and that absolutely change your life. And so you know, you and I talk a lot about this and we text about it and, you know, we text almost every day about um, and share little memes and little things that we see on Instagram that are very inspiring because um, as I've shared on past, um, you know, calls like this with other guests, um, you know, I as well have had my own struggles with body image. And so what's interesting is that body image struggles are something that probably like 99% of women struggle with. So it doesn't matter what your body looks like, what size you are, what age you are. As women, we are so, so hard on ourselves. And so we don't see ourselves the way our children see us. We don't see ourselves the way our girlfriends see us. So yeah. somebody might be looking at you going, oh, Carrie, I so admire your body. But you're looking in the mirror and you're just maybe hating on what you see when you look mm -hmm. in the mirror. And so what I love about what I see you doing is that you're changing that mindset for all women. And I think it's part of a bigger movement that is happening right now. And I think we can actually be grateful to COVID um, for a lot of this as well, mm -hmm. right? that I think women are being so much more grateful now around what we have. And, you know, if we, if you're in a healthy body, if you, you know, hopefully if you haven't been afflicted in, you know, a personal way or your family hasn't been afflicted personally with COVID, I think we're taking our health 
um, much more, you know, uh, in, in an appreciative way that yeah. we're not taking our health for granted. We want to be able to move our bodies. We want to be able to be healthy. And you are giving women a way to do that in their own home. Yeah, and it's been really fun. And it's been really interesting, too, because in the beginning, so as I've really strayed away from this desire to lose weight and that being my focus, and I would love to tell you that I don't step on the scale. I still do once in a while. It's it's a relationship I've been in for, I can't remember when I didn't weigh myself. Mm -hmm. I do it a lot less. I'd love to get to that point, but I still do it once in a while. It's Like I said, it's a work in progress. Right. But I do have to be really aware that when sometimes when someone will email me and say, I want to join because I I'm I want to get my COVID-19. I want to get I want to get skinny. And those things really trigger me. And then I have to really be like, that's their their start of their journey. I was that person too. Right. Oh. So you'll never hear me say in the class and we don't do it. And it's funny because as it progresses, I hear the women talking in the same way is that we talk about getting stronger. Um, so I want to be like, oh, my gosh, I noticed definition in my arms, um, muscles, um, you know, um, one of the one of the uh, women in my group who's had a massive transition she's been with me since the beginning, um, using terms like, you know, being in a bigger body, like she's not calling herself fat anymore, like using those terms, which are really important to me. And I think that that I always said I was fat or like use those words. And then I'm like, no, we're just in a bigger body. And some people are in a smaller body and that doesn't that doesn't define you but i'm enjoying watching people through this journey and i think it's the message you send and i'm not going to talk about i'm not going to talk about getting skinny and i'm not going to talk about losing weight it's always going to be about getting stronger mobile flexible because let's face it we're we're in our 30s 40s 50s 60s we, we i just want to move i want to be able to sit on the ground with my grandchildren that's basically my goal that's right. all i want is to be able to sit down and get up with my grandkids right so right being in a smaller body or a bigger body that has actually no effect absolutely and so and that's why i thought this was such an important topic in this group find your 40 because um for those of you that might be new to this group one of the things that i'm so passionate about is i don't talk about anti-aging i don't talk about being thin i don't talk about you know any of those um labels around you know well let's shrink our body let's make our body younger let's look younger no you know what we are what we are like we are yeah. you know like you said women in our 30s 40s 50s and above and we're not going to stop the clock we're not going to stop the aging process but we can absolutely stop you know maybe feeling those pains that we feel by not moving our body we mm -hmm. can absolutely feel stronger we can appreciate our bodies and you know what they the gifts that they are able to bring us without always being like oh i need to be thinner oh i need to be younger like ladies we need to we need to ditch those thoughts because they're only going to be bringing us down they're only going to keep us in that negative place and you know i'm like you carrie like i have good days i have bad days mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody that's on this call and please comment um if this is resonating with you in the comment box but you know i have good days where i'll you know catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror and i'll go oh my god i really wish you know my thighs were a little bit more toned or you know oh you know maybe i have to get less carbs today and then i have to give my head a shake and go like no you need to eat to fuel your body you need to eat to be strong you need to um, work out to be to be strong and healthy, but it's not about shrinking the body, right? No, and I think the other thing too. I was thinking, I've been thinking a lot about this, and again, there's sometimes when women join, they say these things, and I have to just let them kind of get there. On maybe they will, maybe they won't, right? Like, this is my journey; it doesn't mean it has to be everyone's. Yeah. But when people say, oh, "I hate exercising so much," like I just, I'll try it, but I hate it, and I'm like, when you're exercising for just your for your to make your body more mobile or stronger or for fun or to socialize with your friends it's so much more fun than when you're exercising to punish your body if you're exercising because you ate too many halloween candies which is i'm just so tired of these posts to speak about halloween candies eat the halloween candies and enjoy them they're delicious and be okay with it yes. don't exercise because you ate halloween candies right? right exercise because this morning you want to lift weights and you wanted to get stronger and more mobile and you want to feel better because i exercised this morning and i feel a ton better it was hard and i feel great now for doing it 
I didn't exercise. I didn't think about one thing I ate last night that I had to exercise off. Right. And I think the more we say this, and we have to really be watching what we are looking at on social media. And I have, I've gotten rid of a ton of things over COVID because the more we tell people that, you know, if you like, you know, if you eat this, then you have to do this many push-ups to work it off. No, I'm oh. like, we should, you should do push-ups to work on your shoulder mobility and to work on your, your upper body strength. That is the only reason you're doing push-ups. Otherwise, why? Right. Right. You want to eat the chocolate bar? Have it. I don't want any, I want, I want women to be able to go out with their friends, have a night with their partners, their kids. And I want you to have wine, have cheese, have chocolate, whatever, and just have fun and enjoy it. And then yeah. you are okay with it. Like we need to stop having guilt for what we put in our body. Absolutely. Like we just have to be okay with it. And then exercise is a totally different thing. It is for your mind. It's for your stress. It's for your endorphins. It's for your happiness. It's for your mobility. It's for your future. It has nothing to do with what you ate that right. morning, that night, or what you're going to eat. It has no, it should have no bearing. They should be two separate things. Right. And I know, um, again, from being friends, but also you just you just wrote this fantastic blog article. So I will I think I actually already shared it in this Facebook group. But um, if I haven't or if you're looking for it again, I will actually reshare it after this discussion today down in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, but I know you talk about in that blog article around how you've tried, you know, every diet, under everything. And I, I chuckled when I read that blog because you know that I also have tried everything under the sun um, and have been very, very restrictive. And like, there's been times where, you know, I've gone out for a meal and I'm like, oh gosh, no, I can't have wine. And I can't have dessert and I can't have this and I can't have that. And, you know, I also don't eat meat. So I'm like, oh, I can't eat that. Like, well, that takes off. Basically there's one thing on the menu I can eat and that's a salad. <laughs> and like, how pathetic and how sad is that when that it's becomes super sad. existence, right? Yeah. You share in your blog article about how you were out and mm -hmm. eating fries. So do you want to tell that story and how you put so much shame on yourself? So I was, um, I was on at the time, one of the, I've literally tried, you can't name a diet that I haven't tried. Mm -hmm. um, I've done them all and I've lost weight at every single one. Every single one I've lost weight and every single one I've gained weight. Um, I was doing keto, which I also attribute for losing half of my head of hair. I had a lot of nasal hair before keto. Wow. These are the things that we do when we're restricting ourselves. I restricted yeah. myself and lost about half my hair. Um, so I was in the milk keto and I was losing, I had lost weight and I was doing great. And I was at Turtle Jacks and anyone who knows me, that's where we love to eat all the time. And I decided that one time that I was going to have sweet potato fries. I ne hadn't had them in so long. And I decided to. And yeah. somebody who I knew from this keto Facebook group wasn't walked by me. And I literally tossed my fries at my daughter because I didn't want to get caught with these fries. And yeah. I remember Taylor was like, and I was like, just hold the fries. And the friend stopped. And I was so worried as she's talking to me that she's going to figure out that I'm eating sweet potato fries. Yeah. I would probably guess that friend didn't even care or wasn't going to care or, or probably had had sweet potato fries herself. <laughs> and I did. And it ruined my dinner. And I was so embarrassed. and I was so filled with disgust and shame that I didn't finish my dinner. They ordered this beautiful butter tart with ice cream that we all share. And I did it because I felt this need to punish myself because I got caught with these fries and it ruined my dinner. And I was like miserable all night. And it was a beautiful night with my family. And I ruined it for that. And it, I think that's sad. And I think that happens a lot. Like, I think we do that. Right. Um, I see comments on social media all the time. Well, how many calories is that? Is that keto? Is that this? Is that low fat? Um, yeah. You does know, it blah, blah, all your macros? Yeah. Or? Does it, are your macro, all these things. And I'm like, yeah. let it, like, why are we doing this to ourselves? And I'm not, if you're on, if you're eating anything and you're doing, that's great. Like do it, but just make sure you're eating it for yourself and just, like I'm, I just don't want to restrict anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't do well for my headspace. It doesn't do well for my body. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, I can lose weight, but at the end of the day, I was so deprived mm -hmm. and I was unhappy. And, and now I'm feeling the repercussions. Like I'm very focused on my hair, losing so much hair on it that I was like, that's great that I lost that weight, but then I gained it back and now I stuck without half my hair. So I don't really know the benefit of it. Right. Yeah, I didn't know that 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 had happened to you. Mm -hmm. you know, that was the, I've I've heard about that. I've read about that. Mm -hmm. 
yeah um, because your body's lacking so many nutrients by depriving yourself um when yeah. you go through some of these diets right and some those are some of the repercussions so wow i mean so when you when you think back now carrie over the last you know 10 years 20 years maybe maybe longer you know what would you tell your younger self um not your 40 year old self actually you just had a birthday so you're 45 now which is awesome yeah. you look so amazing Thank um, you. you had a covid birthday like i guess mm -hmm. Pretty much everybody in 2020 is gonna <laughs> um but what would you tell yourself you know your 25 year old or your 35 year old self i think i would i think i wish that i had learned what i would have done aside from my like aside from the, the physical body i wish i learned that going for a walk that learning to have some physical exercise in your and i'm not pushing it by any means because i don't feel like i'm not saying go out and run a marathon i'm saying go for a 15 minute walk every day yeah. i wish i understood the the impact of physical fitness vitamin d fresh air what that has on my body more than what i did when i was younger like you know, I'd go and party on a Friday night and then maybe I took a whole bunch of laxatives on Saturday to get rid of the garbage in my system on Friday. That's not a great plan. That's a terrible plan. But that's what that's what we all did in college. It was such a normal thing. And I think that's crazy now to think about that yeah. where I'm like, well, what if I got up and I went for a walk instead? What if I, you know, like still had fun with my friends and I still partied because I was still 20 and got to do those things. But what if I made different choices the next day? Right. I wish I knew the value of of that. It would have really helped with bad headspace. Um, you know, I wish that I knew about that when I had Nicholas and I'm really having like fighting some postpartum. I wish I knew the value of going outside and getting some physical fitness and getting some fresh air, going for that walk as opposed to just sitting at home and eating and eating my feelings. And again, those are fine things to do, but I didn't know that. A simple 15 minute walk could change my entire day right right and and it, it really does reset your mind and your, mm -hmm. your frame of mind by doing that and yeah. so that's why i brought up the point earlier about today being um appropriately um international stress awareness day yes because, you know not only is it the day after the uh u.s election which um you know i think a lot of people found that to be very very stressful um i myself was you know kind of binging on chips and stuff last night as i was watching and um what i did was i was eating it and i was saying wow and i vocalized because i was with my daughters and my husband and i said wow, I'm eating because I actually feel really stressed watching this election because we don't know what the implications are going to be of the outcome. And so, you know, yes, I was enjoying the sweet potato chips I was eating, but and I acknowledged like, this is what my body needs right now. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because this yeah. is the stress that I'm feeling. And then today when I got up, it, you know, my, my typical routine anyways is to get up and either join your 615 now. Um, I'm, I'm part of that club, as I mentioned or I, you know, do my, do my own thing a little bit later if I can't get my butt out of bed to join you. So today when I finally did get my butt out of bed after watching the election quite late, you know, my husband commented, you know, good, go get your workout in and, you know, relieve some of your stress. And yeah. I thought that was such an appropriate and interesting comment that he made because that is absolutely how I relieve my stress. And then I, do also try to get some fresh air and go for a walk as well in the day because yeah. I know that that's what works for my body. Yeah. Um, and then, but in the meantime, if my body is asking me to eat some chips or some Halloween candy or mm -hmm. you know whatever it might be, a year ago I would not have honored that. I no. would I would have felt so guilty. And I would have just absolutely ripped myself to shreds with that guilt. And now I can actually say, you know what? It's okay. Yeah. And I think the thing to, to think about stress relief, especially with women, because I hear this a lot is I don't have time. Like I don't have time for that hour. I don't have time. I don't, and I get, and I, I get it. Like you don't have time. Sure. I think what people are trying, what I think you have to really look around because I think if you see, there's tons of free content on social media, there's lots of, um, especially like um you know women who are trying to do this now is give you in, in small bits right so when i'm saying go for a 15 minute walk that might be all you get to do and that's amazing right like i just had a conversation with a friend yesterday who's running out of time and i'm like maybe it's time to get a treadmill like i know you're not a treadmill person 
but maybe it's time to get that treadmill. Maybe you can just walk for 15 minutes, right? Like that yeah. is a baby step. So yeah. I look at things like, um, cause that commitment and that's why I've really enjoyed that zoom. I'm like, come late, leave early. People do it all the time. Right. You don't have time. I, I have times people come in for 20 minutes between meetings. I don't that's care great. if you're late, right. Leave yeah. coming in and out. Um, one of the colleagues I work for, her videos are in 15 minute intervals. So you can do one 15 minute or you could do three of them. And that's I think cool. that's what we need to look for. Like we're so quick to say, we don't have time. We don't have time. And time is hard to find. Mm -hmm start looking for those 15 minutes because i don't think you need an hour to relieve your stress right to start right. i think we need 10 15 minutes right. and if that is a walk if that is a meditation if that is whatever it is i think we need to start look we have to really encourage each other and share information and not be afraid i'm not afraid to say go look at you know go to my colleague and look at her 15 minute videos you don't i'm not saying you have to do what i'm doing I think women need to tell other women there's options out there. It right. may not be mine. It may be what you're doing, but there's 10, 15 minute options. Help another woman start, help somebody start with their, their journey. Mm -hmm. And most people right now need 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. To yeah. start because at one hour, 45 minutes, those are intimidating numbers. True. And we have to stop scaring women that you have to do this for 45 minutes or you're not going to achieve your goals. We yeah. have to say, Give yourself 10 minutes. You right. deserve it. Like we have to be helping each other, you know, get through that. Yeah, we for sure do. And um, I think it's when we set those huge goals, like, you know, oh my gosh, January, I'm going to work out five days a week for an hour. Yeah. A day. Come on, give me a break. Like there's very, very few people that can set those lofty goals and actually yeah. stick to it. So set yourself up for success right from the get go, right? Mm -hmm. Like just. Yep carve out those five or 10 minutes. Um, I was listening to a podcast. I'm a huge fan of podcasts. And Me when too. I walk my dog, I do, I do. That's my time to go listen to a podcast. And I was listening to a gentleman and I apologize. I don't remember his name right now, but he was talking about this exact thing. And he was saying that um, he coaches people on, you know, how to be successful in their life goals. And he said, you know, while you're waiting for your coffee to brew or your, or your teapot, you know, to, to boil, do five minutes of something you're standing there in the kitchen walk up and down the stairs yeah walk up and down the stairs do squats beside your coffee maker while you're waiting for that coffee to to come out yeah. you know do you know there's so many things that you can do and you know it's not about setting these fantastically large goals like oh i'm gonna run my first marathon that's that's great do that yeah. but start with those little little baby increments and then yeah. you know, move your way along. Um, so we just had a comment. Um, yes, now that I've started exercising, I'm encouraging everyone to do the same to make a start. So thank you. We can't actually see who um, who posted that, but that's Sonia. And Sonia has been oh. a huge has had a huge transition. She's been doing amazing. Sonia started off, you know, with doing like a small things, and now Sonia's doing incredibly things. Sonia just turned fifty. Oh and my yeah, so happy birthday, Sonia! And happy she's doing birthday. amazing things. Amazing, amazing thing that she was very new to new very new to exercising and she's killing it and she just started off small she did what she could and she worked her way up and now she can do everything like it's amazing wow i think i was on your class last week when sonia had yeah. her birthday so. yes yes you were yes yeah. thank you sonia for making that comment somebody else says i set my alarm for 10 minute movement breaks when i'm sitting yeah. for for work for a long time Oh my gosh, that is a lifesaver, right? It's a like, great idea. Um, I I love doing that, and you know, I don't do every ten minutes. My gosh, but um, or no, it's not every ten, but you set it and then you do a ten minute. So that's brilliant. That's great, yeah. and what a great way to help you to refocus um, from a time management standpoint too. Right? I so. had this um, in my in my modified cardio class this morning. It's mainly it is mainly seniors, and one of the things that we work on a lot is just. Um, getting up and down off your chair without using your hands. Wow. And it was very difficult from the beginning. And it's still, it, it is like, if you just, if you do it, it's like, basically it's doing squats basically. Right? right. And they do up and down, they can't use their hands and the improvement has been awesome. And that's one thing that they've started doing is on their own. They do 10 up and downs off their chairs every single day. And it's those little things. Wow. Right. 
yeah. like before they could barely get through a set of 10 in a class and now they're doing a set of 10 on their own after class like it's huge wow. it's small small things like we all look so we just make such big goals and that's great you know like i try to write things out of things that i eventually want to do um people say all the time like oh I, you know I, you have so much energy i couldn't work out the way you do i didn't just start doing this i used to do thursday nights that was it i did thursday nights i did once a week i did once a week forever and then eventually it was a second night it was like, like that was years years to get up to daily workouts right right yeah. so it, it so don't look at where someone is and think that's where you have to be because yeah. a lot of people have been doing it for years to get to that to that level yeah exactly yeah it's definitely a work in progress it's like it's I think everything that we're talking about today is a work in progress. Being mm -hmm. able to accept our body, feeling more positive about our bodies, feeling like, okay, you know what? I'm 50 and I'm freaking killing it. Or, you know, I'm 30 and I'm starting and I'm killing it. Like yeah. wherever you're at, just appreciate where you're at. And, you know, just be thankful that your body um, allows you to do what it is that you, that you want to do. And like, I'm approaching 50 and that's where I'm at. Like, I just want my body to be able to move without pain. Um, yes. And since I've been, you know, exercising every day, I, or at least moving my body in some way every day, I feel less pain. I feel great. Like it's Absolutely. actually when I, when I lag and when I don't move as much as I should, that I start to feel those aches and pains. And that's not a good way to go through life. Yeah, no, it's it's not. And I think I just if, if if I could tell women like one thing just to really pay attention to like I like I'm obviously in a, in a, in a larger body and I I've been in a larger body previously. I've been in a smaller body, but I'm this is I do kind of think this is my set point. My body oh, always kind of comes back to here. This is my body without deprivation. This is my body eating nutrients. This is my body enjoying the things that I like to enjoy. You know, so I think this is my set point. I think that we're all changes get more mobile, more strong, things like that. But I, I think that I see far too often, and it's um, a couple, th a couple of things I just want to point out as you, as you, I'd like you to walk away with. I think one we just really need to look at how people view people in larger bodies. I think it is the one discrimination that's still socially acceptable. I think it is okay to make fat jokes. I think it's okay. Like that's, a, I'm not saying, I'm saying people in society still laugh at that. It's mm -hmm. okay. People don't get offended the same way that they do. It's, and it's very hard. It's, it's one of those things that just, it's not as frowned upon yet. And I think we have to stop being part of the problem. I think ways we can stop being part of the problem is what I've had to really work on is not saying those negative things about yourself. When you say, to, when you say, I'm gross, I look at me, I'm fat, I'm gross. There's always someone who's in a bigger body than you. And they're hearing that and they're thinking, that's the body they're trying to get to. Right. And you're saying you're fat and gross, then what does it say about them? And I think we'd be really aware of that. And I, I'm as guilty of it as anyone else of doing that, of, of talking that negative. And I really try hard not to do that. Mm -hmm. Being very aware of how there's someone out there who wishes they had my body exactly. just like I wish I had. I used to wish I had someone else's and yeah. most days I don't most days I'm, I'm happy with what I am. I still have those moments, right. That we're working on trying to get past wishing you had something that I don't have. Yeah. I think we'd be really aware of that. And I think we also have to be very aware of how we acknowledge other women and, um, and how we see things. So when people say, wow, uh, you look great. You look how look how look how small you are. You look great. I really hear how bad I look before. Right. right. That's how it comes across. I'm as guilty of this as everyone else. It's a habit. We say it all the time. Right. So I try to all the time look and go, wow, you look really happy. Oh, you look so strong. Oh, like you, something something else that has nothing to do with their their body. You know, right. like. I, I tried, and it's funny because I actually gave someone a compliment the other day about being um, looking really happy, and they were very weirded out by it. I think people are so used to us commenting on physical our physical bodies that people aren't used to that, right? So I think we just have to be very aware of how we're talking about other people's bodies because 
we don't we don't know you know and um one of the things i became very aware of in the last couple weeks that i i i, I still have to work on is i met a woman who's in a smaller body she's a great runner i uh, met her at run club and my automatic assumption was she's always been in a smaller body running is easy for her and she doesn't know my struggles and then after I had posted something, she sent me a picture of her in a previously in a larger body. And I was like, oh, because I think we assume that people who are in smaller bodies have always been in a smaller body and it's easy for them. And sometimes it has, right? But a lot of times it's not. So I think instead of making assumptions about, um, I don't want people to make an assumption that I'm in a larger body because I'm lazy and unhealthy. Right. We can't be making assumptions that someone's in a smaller body because they just got lucky. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That it's just easy for them. And yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. body that woman's in, it's not your business. Right. It's cool. Like it's right. all, it's okay. And I think that's something I still have to work on. I still have to, because I remember when you would talk to me about your body issues that would blow my mind. I'd be like, but her body's so perfect. And it's just, but it doesn't, it doesn't take away that you have these, you have your internal issues, you know, yeah, that you have to work through those things. Right. Right. And is that come? I just want you. I just want you to see yourself how everyone else sees you, and that's all you can ask for yourself as well. Right. And I think that um, this came up as well when I when I had this Facebook Live with Jody Becker, and she's an athlete, and she's been in this industry for you know for many 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 years, and you know we had that same discussion around how you know how can we start changing mindsets so that we ourselves are helping other women and helping ourselves, quite frankly, to mm -hmm. start to change societal views about yeah. bodies. Like we need to start judging other women's bodies. But that starts with, sorry, did I say we need to start? We need to stop, <laughs> we need to stop judging other women's bodies. Yes. That starts with us stopping the judgment of ourselves. Yeah. Right? So yeah, as, soon, as soon as we're able to accept ourselves, then we can look at another body, maybe with more compassion, with more appreciation and more understanding that that is just their body and it doesn't require our judgment. And we mm -hmm. have no right to be judging other people. We live in such a society that has gotten comfortable with making those judgments with, you know, well, we have to look good for our man, for our husband, for our partner. And we, you know, we always have to stay youthful looking and everything else. And mm -hmm. it's not about that. It's about just appreciating who, who you are and what you are. Yeah. And it's funny because I really like, um, I think 98% of the time I'm really good. I'll look and I go like, I, like I had to really accept like my bum. My, I have, I have a, I have a bum <laughs> and it's funny. And it used to really be a source of like insecurity because I was like, no matter what I did, I couldn't. And then I'm like, oh, but I can like deadlift. I can, I can do heavyweights. There's a lot of things that that bum actually gives me advantages of, right? Oh, Anyone really? who's yeah. been through my classes knows how much I love squats and wall sits. Huh. I have a big bum. That is an, an a natural advantage that I genetically have and I've come to embrace it. And that's a tough one for some people, right? Right. And I think that we have to, and most days I'm okay with it, but then there'll be times where a new person will join my class. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, they're going to log on and they're going to see that this is the size of me and I'm 45 and, and I don't look like those Instagram people. And I keep waiting for someone to be like, oh, you're the instructor? But that never happens, right? Like they they do because it's, they they buy in, and I I have to I still struggle with that a little bit, yeah. and I have to talk myself through. No, like you're doing something different. You're not. I'm not. I'm not teaching you perfection. If anyone's done my class, they know that sometimes I'm like, so we're gonna try something today, and I don't really know how it's gonna go, but we're gonna give it a go, right? Yeah, I don't do. push. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do proper push-ups. They're on my knees. I fall out of balances all the time. Like I'm the furthest thing from perfect, but we try, we try new things. And that's, that's what I've always, I pride myself on. Yeah. I've never sold myself as perfect. So people aren't coming in expecting that, but it's that moment of that new person looking at you and having to work past it. So I'm a work in progress too. Um, and I'm just very lucky that I have a lot of sort of supportive people and who are very comfortable saying things you know, that we have those open conversations where we can say those nice things about 
our work to each other. And I think it's awesome. I think we have to be okay with saying those things to women, even if that woman, woman may not be ready to hear what you have to say. When you say, wow, you you look so strong or you look so happy, um, you know, and they might go, oh, well, you didn't notice I lost six pounds. I don't care. I know that you look happy. Right. Right. I care about that. Right. Yeah. We need to, we need to really watch our language and set ourselves up for success uh, by doing that. So th that is all such amazing, amazing advice. What else would you say, you know, when you think, so you're halfway now through your forties, mm -hmm. how else do you want to find your 40? What else do you see is going to come to you in, you know, the next five years, the next 10 years? I will be changing the name of this group, by the way, to find your 50s <laughs> in a couple of years. So, you know, we can all start thinking about our 50s and what we want to do then. But, you know, what what would you say is your goals um, for the next five years? Um, I think I think that I if I've realized one thing that the goals I made for myself five years ago are, are some, I, some I've achieved and some I've taken it, I've veered off. Uh -huh. I think I'm at the point at 45 that I'm kind of like, I actually just want to see what presents itself to me. Well, I, like I'm looking for things, but I'm not, I don't want to, I just don't want to like put myself in a corner and be like, okay, this is what you have to do. I don't think I'm going to run a marathon. I don't think I'm going to become a really fast runner. I don't think I'm going to, you know, all these things. I just want to be like, so what can we do next? Can we, you know, can I get to the push up off my knees? Like, I, like I want real, those really small goals, and I just want to see can this, can this fitness, you know, the Zoom fitness, can it keep going? Can we have more women? I'm not looking to have a million women on it, but I don't know. Can we do it? Can some of those women who are in those classes do their own thing? Can they, you know, I just want to see where it takes it. And I want to see if we can go long enough without talking about calories and weight loss and getting skinny. And I just like the language and I just want to keep doing it and feel yeah. happy. Cause I just, I can't believe like I get to do this and I can't yeah. believe I get to do it with my friends and I can't believe I get to make friends doing it, but yeah. I don't, I don't know what I want to do. I think, because if you asked me five years ago, I don't think that I would have been like, this is what I'm doing, right? Like, yeah. I thought I was going to be in a gym teaching classes live. Yeah. I didn't think I'd be teaching on a computer. And now I can't imagine not doing right. that. Yeah, I think you've started something amazing. And yeah. like I said, the timing the timing is so unusual yet so yes. amazing. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think, I think we, I think that, um, the few of us who were doing those COVID workouts together, like just working out, mm -hmm. I think just really fell into a good thing. It kept all, it got all of us waking up in the morning and got all of us doing something together. But I don't right. know, I kind of hope in five years from now, I'm like, oh, I didn't see that coming. I can't believe I'm doing this now. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? I, think, I just want yeah. to do something that doesn't define me being 50, like something that I, I like that what I'm doing is not a typical 45 year old thing. Yeah. No, it's certainly, it's not a typical anything, right? Like it's just, yeah you're just forging new ground. And that's why I wanted to have you on as part of this speaker series, because I think the more as women, we can share these stories of inspiration. And the more like if you if you changed one person's um, outlook on their body today, then I feel like we've just accomplished so much because yeah. the spillover effect of doing that and helping one person, you can never underestimate the impact no. that you have, right? Yeah. And, you know, we're mothers of daughters, uh, Carrie. So between us, we've got four daughters and, you know, we have to start changing this mindset as well for the next generation. Never mind just, you know, our generation of women in their forties, we all impact, um, you know, the next generation through our mind. Absolutely. Yeah. And I read like I read like a statistic the other day about diet culture, like 99.9% .9 of diets are unsuc like are, are unsuccessful. Yeah. And I thought it's crazy because I've probably spent millions of dollars <laughs> oh. into diet culture. And I think about that all the time. I think, okay, I just need to make sure I save my child that kind of money. And have, but I want her to be healthy. I don't want her to have the same kind of struggles, right? That I that yeah. I've had, right? So you want to have it's it's finding it out, right? So I I agree. Like we need to help each other, but we can't forget about our daughters, our sons, how they view women, yeah. um, and all those all these things, right? Like we have to. It's kind of like we. I think it's it's a constant circle, right? Like yeah. sometimes I think I worry so much about fixing myself that you forget to have those conversations with your kids too. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I would really love that to also be a takeaway message that everyone on this call, um, you know, acknowledges and listens to. And, you yeah. know, oh, my gosh, Carrie, you're getting so much love here on <laughs> comment so thank you everyone carrie i i think we've covered pretty much everything that was on our our lengthy list of stuff that <laughs> where we got across today to everyone yeah is there anything else carrie that you can think of any burning points that you want to make sure you get out um no i, th I think that was i was thinking about actually when you were talking about the aha moments i had a couple so one was the one with taylor and the other one was um, I don't believe, I think I was probably in my biggest body when this happened and my friend, I was going on a Disney cruise and my friend said, uh, oh my God, just wear the bikini. And I was like, no, I don't wear bikinis. And she was like, wear the bikini. And I bought it and I wore it and nobody cared. Nobody, nothing. nothing. And I've never actually not worn a bikini since then. Right. So I say one thing, wear the bikini. Wear the shorts, wear the t-shirt, don't cover your arms, whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. whatever clothes you want to wear. Like, I'm so tired of having all these things I want to wear and I was too scared to wear. Just wear them. Right. Wear them, enjoy them, appreciate yeah. them, celebrate them. Yeah. Um, that's that's exactly the message. That I just always want. think that just wear the bikini. Yeah. <laughs> wear the darn bikini yeah yeah oh my gosh. well you're not going to be wearing your well you still have your pool open so you are going to actually oh i'm going to be wearing my bikini again this week for until, sure until <laughs> January, i hear but yeah the rest of us may have packed ours away for now but definitely yeah. wear the darn bikini just, just enjoy your body so exactly oh enjoy well, your body this has been an amazing discussion i was so excited for today and eat, eat the halloween candy as well everyone as well and eat, the, and eat the halloween candy yeah if you want to have it drink the wine have the beer enjoy yeah. it yeah eat the sweet potato fries so yeah exercise for here yeah be strong how yeah. about an amazing wednesday everyone Please, you can keep commenting. You can comment below in the post. This will be available um, for replay. If you have any friends that you think would benefit from this video, please enjoy them. Uh, invite them to join the group, and then they can also enjoy the replay here. So thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. It. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jody. <laughs>